Matthew chapter 9, the 35th verse. Praise the Lord for my wife, First Lady Julia Washington. I thank God for her. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible reads Matthew chapter 9. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Everybody say the kingdom. And healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. I want to preach in your hearing this morning from the topic, do you see the harvest? Amen. Do you see the harvest? Father, bless us today as we came, Lord, to hear from heaven. Speak to our ears. Guide us by your truth. Educate us with your Holy Ghost. God, when we leave, we'll be better than what we came. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Uh, yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Give you just a little bit more volume on this one. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 9, the 35th through the 37th verse. I want to begin this morning by talking about what we see in our day and time. Amen. And sometimes we can look at the glass half empty and not look at the glass half full. Amen. Do I have a witness in here? Amen. With all that we hear in the media and everything that we hear every day, it can, it can cause us to walk in fear and not in faith. Amen. Amen. It can cause us to be afraid of the times. It can cause us to uh, kind of step back in our walk with God. Yes. We talked about Wednesday night that we must remember our first love. Amen. The Bible says, John said in Revelation chapter 2, Church, I see your labor. I see your effort. But don't forget about your first love. Yes. In our text today, this is one of the most heartwarming and touching scenes in the entire Bible. It is Matthew's personal testimony. Imagine him seeing and writing about the experiences of so many others. When you read the book of Matthew and you read one through chapter eight, you'll notice that Matthew doesn't give his personal testimony. But in chapter nine, he begins to deal with himself because every now and then you gotta take a self-evaluation. Yeah. He comes to his own personal experience and, and you gotta understand that Paul, I mean Matthew was bitterly opposed and talked and gossiped about. He was a hated man, he was a tax collector. You look at chapter nine and you look around the ninth verse, it says, and as Jesus passed forth from this, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, follow me. But at this time, you got to know that Matthew was going through his own problems because he was collecting taxes for the Romans. Amen. And he was a Jew, so you can imagine how the Jews look at tax collectors. Uh -huh. Oh, y'all ain't saying that. Some of y'all don't answer the phone now when you know it's a Hallelujah. But he was also detested that he was classified. He was so detested that he was classified with the sinners. He was a tax collector for the conquering nation. 
He had become wealthy by extortion and so wealthy that he was able to house all these men in his house. When Jesus sat down with them, they were sitting in Matthew's house. Amen. He was so blessed, but he was also burdened. It's one thing to have a good job, but then be troubled at your house. Y'all ain't saying that. Amen. It, it, it is, it's one thing to be so blessed financially. Yeah, you got the car that you drive, but your family is all messed up. Yeah. You got the money that you so inspired to have, but once you got the money, you feel you've now understood that you're empty without God. Yes. We got the man, but then you didn't know the man had so much baggage. You got the woman, but you didn't know what was behind when you saw behind him. Y'all ain't gonna help me this morning. So, so this man was immoral. He was unjust. He was money hungry. He was worldly minded. He cared more for possessions and wealth than for people. But, but what's amazing is, and what's heartwarming and touching about his story is that he, he now comes to the conversion that Jesus, he sat down with me. And Jesus came and told me to follow him in spite of what people thought about me. He told me to come and follow in spite of what they said about me on the corner. Y'all said, in spite of what my family said about me, Jesus said, come and follow me. But he doesn't spend so much time talking about himself. He lifts up Jesus in the text. He emphasized not only his own conversion, but the fact that Jesus came to save tax collectors and sinners such as himself. Anybody glad that Jesus came to save us? Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew chapter 9, the book starts out with Jesus healing the man that was paralyzed. Look at verse 2. It says, And behold, they brought to him a man sick of palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. He heals the sick of palsy. Jesus demonstrates his dunamis power to be able to heal a man's soul and spirit. Jesus forgives, which demonstrates his kingdom authority. He says, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven. Now, most people on the outside would say, this man needs his body to be healed. But Jesus knew that his soul needed to be healed. It is one thing because, see, we focus on the outside. Jesus said, if I don't deal with the inside, then the outside don't matter. You might have a healthy body, but the healthy body is going to let the soul go to hell. Y'all. See, Jesus was a great physician. He removed the cause before treating the symptoms because Jesus had to deal with the cause before I deal with the symptoms. Sometimes we focus on the alcohol, we focus on the cigarettes, we focus on the lust, but God has to deal with the inside before that stops. That stuff ceases because the many of the time, the reason why we got started is because something happened to us down the line. And all of a sudden we saw the alcohol, we saw the booze, we saw all of that as an as a outlet for what we were really feeling. And so Jesus said, I need to go to the internal. I need to go to the inside in order to heal that. Because if I don't heal that, the rest doesn't matter. Yes. Yes. Jesus now, he, he, he removes the bullet before he sews up the wound. Yes. Hallelujah. Because if you leave the bullet in there and you sew up the wound, you're still going to have an infection. Y'all ain't saying that. Are y'all with me this morning? He has to sew. He has to take out the bullet. And you got to look at your neighbor this morning and say, what is your bullet? What is the thing that has caused you to have so much trouble? What is the thing that has caused you to, to live in cycles and in cycles? What is the thing that has caused you to be, uh, to be paralyzed in a sense? Because some of us are spiritually paralyzed. We do good for a season and then we find ourselves paralyzed all over again. Amen. What has caused us to go in cycles? Sometimes going in cycles becomes our common course. I, I, I do good and God brings me out, but here I go back again to the stuff I wanted God to deliver me out of because now it is a good time. I ain't talking to you. Okay, I do good for a season and now here comes depression creeping back in. I ain't talking to you. I do good for a season, but all of a sudden I get full of myself and I don't need God because I got the job I wanted. I got the marriage I wanted. So I don't 
need God because he did what I wanted him to do. No, if you don't be careful, you will find yourself in a cycle of disruption. Do you not know that the enemy wants you to have something to cause you to drift away from God? Somebody say cycles. Cycles. We got to be careful of cycles. We got to be careful of what we go through in our life. In, in our text today, Matthew verse 18, the Bible says that there was a ruler, hallelujah, whose daughter was dead. Somebody say dead. dead. And when they came to Jesus, he says, I just need you to heal my daughter. I just need you to deliver my daughter. Verse 18. And, and when Jesus came in verse 23, he came to the ruler's house and they were dancing. They were singing songs. There were minstrels and there were people making noise. But the atmosphere was for death. Amen. They, they, his daughter was there and she was dead, but the atmosphere was for death. Amen. They were making a lot of noise. They were shouting, but the atmosphere was wrong. <laughs> They were making a lot of, low, a lot of noise, but the atmosphere wasn't conducive for healing. Somebody say amen. amen. They, they were making a lot of noise, and, and that tells you the day that we live in, we can make a lot of noise, but the atmosphere be wrong. Amen. We can come in here and shout, but the atmosphere be wrong. Hallelujah. And that's why I see today that there are many places that you don't see healing. You don't see deliverance. You don't see breakthroughs because we make a lot of noise, but the atmosphere is wrong. Hallelujah. When the atmosphere is wrong, then people will come in here dead and leave out of here dead. When the atmosphere is wrong, you will come in here with bondage and leave out of here with bondage because the atmosphere atmosphere is wrong. Yeah. Jesus, you know what Jesus did? He gets to the room and clears out the room. He says, because I know y'all are in here and these were people that were, they were using, they, they were bought and they were hired for synthetic worship. That means it was a, an example of what was supposed to happen in the natural. But because they, because of this situation, they hired people to come and mourn over her dead body. But Jesus said, she's not dead as you suppose. And they began laughing at Jesus, but Jesus said, let me get the room right. Somebody say, get the room right. Hallelujah, because you got to learn how to get the room right. If you got some stuff in your house that doesn't need to be there, you got to get your house right. Hallelujah, you want people to come in and respect your house, well, get your environment right. Amen. They came to Jesus. And as they came and Jesus healed this young girl, two blind men came to him and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. In verse 27, and Jesus healed them. In verse 32, they brought a man with a demon possessed of the devil. And Jesus healed this man. He was labeled as slow. And then he woke up and started articulating. He started speaking. Hallelujah. So Jesus was healing everyone while they pressed upon him. Notice in many instances, someone brought them to Jesus. Amen. Notice they, they brought the man down and he entered into the house. They brought the blind man to Jesus. They brought the demon possessed to Jesus. Why? Because Jesus saw the harvest. Someone could see that there was an answer to a need. And if Jesus is in my country, if Jesus is in my place, then I'm taking them to Jesus. I wonder do we have anybody today that you're willing to be armed and charged to go out and take them to Jesus. Amen. When the world is in chaos and the pandemic, hallelujah, has called us to even modify our common language. Would you ever think that you would have to say social distancing so much? Would you ever think that you would have to say stand six feet apart so much? Would you ever think that you would have to say that wearing a mask, all of this stuff is, is our norm and vocabulary today, our normal vocabulary, and people are living in fear, and this is the perfect time to bring them to Jesus. Do you think this was different from the day they brought the demon, they brought the man paralyzed, they brought the woman that was dead, they brought 
brought them to Jesus. And I wonder if God has created the environment for us to bring people to Jesus. When everybody's walking in fear and they don't know what tomorrow will hold and they're watching the news every day, I wonder does God have any vessels that are ready to bring somebody to Jesus? Hallelujah. Everyone was aggressively trying to get near Jesus. There was a passionate longing for freedom because if I could just get to him. See, I didn't tell you that as while Jesus was on his way to heal the man's daughter, there was a woman who came by and while Jesus was in the crowd and they wanted healing, this woman just touched the hem of his garment. She healed, he healed her on the way to another healing. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Because there are some people that are looking for the truth. There are some people that are looking for the gospel truth and they're ready to be delivered, but what Jesus is looking for is do I have anybody that will tell them about me? I wish I had some help this morning. I know I'm not preaching about your next house, but God wanted me to tell you, do you see the harvest? Huh? Do you see what's out there? Do you see that the fields are white? Do you see what God is creating an opportunity for you to share? Or will you in this season still be concerned about yourself? Because when you're concerned about about you. You're not concerned about him. And God says, when you get concerned about me, then I'll be more concerned about you. God is looking for laborers. He's charging us in this day to go out and tell what thus saith the Lord. See, you only gonna win your family when you stand in the midst of trouble. If you talk like they talk, if you do like they do, then they ain't gonna respect you. But if you learn how to keep your feet planted and say, I know the wind is blowing, but I got something to hold on to. I know the earth is shaking, but I got something to hold on to. Matthew 9 and 34, the Bible says, but the Pharisees said he casts out devils through the prince of devils. And we talked about this morning in leadership. Hallelujah. That, that, that there are some people that no matter what you do, they still going to criticize you. The volume of your good deeds doesn't matter to the world. They still will find fault in you. That's why obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. That, that, that's why obedience, I don't care what they say, I'm just obeying God. Talk about me all you want to. Hallelujah. Say what you want to say, but don't look for people to praise you for what you've done. Look for God to favor you in your labor. I wish I had some help this morning that some of you have already told me. I've I've heard, I've heard that people got promotions on their job. I've heard bonuses. I've heard new cars. I've heard all of this stuff. And everybody who told me that has committed to labor. They're busy in the work of the Lord. Because when you get busy handling his business, God will take care of your business. But you got to understand that God is looking for people that will possess his power and proclaim his name. Do I have a help in here this morning? Hallelujah. The Bible says, no, 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 sit down. The, the mission of Jesus Christ was to minister. How many of you know that we got the same power? Hallelujah. The Bible says the resurrection power in us. All power was in the hand of Jesus. The mission of Jesus Christ was to minister. Now here, let's cover four things. Jesus' method, his method was reaching people. Yes. He didn't wait on the people to come to him. Jesus went out after the people. He did not sit back waiting on people, but he went out after them. The Bible says in Luke 19 and 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek, somebody say seek, and save that which is lost. Luke 19 and 10. He says, Jesus came out to, aren't you glad that Jesus came to seek you? Hallelujah. Didn't he come out to look for you? Hallelujah. He went out after them. Number one, say, Jesus went out. See, some of y'all think that you got to wait on somebody to say, uh, is there anybody that can tell me how to get to Jesus? No, no, you got to create. The Bible says that he that with his soul is wise. Hallelujah. He offers the tree of life to them. Hallelujah. So I don't care if you're at the Dollar Tree. I don't care if you're at Family Dollar, Food Line, the Cash Register. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, somebody needs to hear about Jesus. We don't sit back and wait for people to come to us. Right. Hallelujah. 
That's called being lazy. The Holy Ghost is meant for holy action. The Holy Ghost is meant for holy use. The holy power is meant to be used. Your vessel is meant to be a container for the power of God. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. So that's where our recommitment of our love for God. You will do it if you love them. Amen. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey. You will do it if you love. I don't want to serve. I don't want to come to church just because I want people to see me coming to church. I don't want to praise just because I want people to see me praise. And no, I do it because I love God. So my praise may not look like your praise because I love him a different way. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So I don't care what you say about me. Some of y'all every night that you just ought to let go and let God. Let God do what he's going to do inside of you. Yes, Lord. So when you have an unrelenting love for God, the Father, remember Jesus had an unrelenting love. He says, I do the will of my Father. Remember, Jesus always pointed back to greater. I do the will of my father. He sent me because because my focus must override my carnal feelings because there's going to be some times when you don't feel like doing it. You don't feel like preaching. You don't feel like t you don't feel like singing. I know sometimes y'all may think, man, I love this so much that I want to do this every day. There are Sundays when you and you may not ever tell when I may not feel like doing it, but the power of God must override how you feel. My focus must override my carnal feelings because some days your, your, your feelings will try to challenge your focus, but my focus keeps me aligned in God's will. Somebody say focus. The word focus means a point of concentration. It means that you got to understand and try to ask God to give you discernment to the people that you are called to. Everybody has a people that they're called to. Ask your neighbor, who are you called to? See, when you find out who you're called to, then you will realize why you had to go through what you went through. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to say that again. When you find out who you're called to, you will find out why you had to go through what you had to go through. Hallelujah. Some of y'all had some stuff going on in your life that you can't even really tell nobody. But is it, is it the opportunity for you to tell somebody that I went through the same thing you went through, yet God delivered me out of it? And that's what happens when you keep your testimony on the inside. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So it's time for us to stop being silent and let the devil win because somebody needs to be delivered by what you say. Do you know that there's power? Death and life is in the tongue and you got the power to resurrect some stuff. You got to learn how to speak power to people that are dying. That's what Jesus did. When he came by, he saw that there was an issue. There was a problem and he had the solution. What you going to do when you walk in with the solution? Are you going to hold it in or are you going to tell somebody and help them heal that problem? Somebody say, find your focus. Realize when you when you discover where you fit, you'll find your focus. <laughs> when you discover where you fit, you'll find your focus. I, hallelujah. My my phone recently, my, my phone has just been ringing off the hook. It's been ringing off the hook and people have been calling with an issue. People have been calling. Somebody called me and one of my friends of mine, he called me and asked me to interpret his dreams. Then another man told me, he says, I need somebody to help me. I need so I want to stick to, to a godly man. Somebody texted me this week I hadn't talked to in 10 years who I went to college with. And he says, man, I just want to get connected with a strong man of God because when you find out where you fit, you'll find your focus and people will begin to call on your gift. Now what you going to do when they start calling on you? Yes, Lord. Who I am called to. I must find out who I am called to discover your burden by remembering what bothers you. 
Discover your burden by remembering what bothers you. I come to tell you that we live in a day that we can't, we got to stop talking about people and do something about it. Y'all ain't saying that. Hallelujah. If you don't like her dress, then go buy, go take her shopping. Y'all ain't going to say that. If you don't like the clothes that she wears, go take, go take her, go take her somewhere. If you don't like her teeth, take her to the dentist. If you don't like, you got to learn how, if you going to do something, don't just talk, do something about it. We live in a day now where we rather talk about people rather than fix the problem. Hallelujah. They don't smell, they don't smell good. Then you, you take them to the store. Show them the eye. Show them how to do it. Hallelujah. This is your day. The scripture talks about the mothers. Hallelujah. Being an influence to the younger. You got to learn that maybe it ain't your time. See, we live in a generation where mothers don't want to be mothers. Grandmothers don't want to be grandmothers. Don't even call me grandma. Call me something else. I still like to go to the club and do do my little thing, and, and God says he had created us to get this wisdom so that we could go back and teach others. Hallelujah. It's time for you to share what God has put inside of you. It was Jesus. He said, go. Everybody say go. In Matthew 28, the Bible says, he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus didn't care where he had to go for ministry. Matthew 9 and 35, Jesus went to the countryside. Matthew 5 and verse 1, Jesus went to the synagogues. Matthew 8, uh, 8 and 23, Jesus went to the graveyard. Matthew 4 and 18, he went to the boat. Hallelujah. And Jesus went to the home. Jesus went anywhere he needed to go to minister the gospel. Hallelujah. There was a woman by the well, and he saw a woman, and he went to Samaria when he wasn't supposed to go. Hallelujah. And they, they were talking about him, and they, they were criticizing him, but Jesus was called to reach just like he reached us. Amen. When you're really called, the location doesn't matter. Amen. It, it doesn't matter where your gift is flexible. God is eliminating what we call pretty preaching nowadays. He's eliminating the, the, the jets in the five-star hotels, and he's looking for people that are ready to go to some dry places. Hallelujah. It's all right to come in here and everybody dressed up. But when will you take what you've learned and take it out there? When will you take what God has given you and share it to somebody out there? It's time out for only preaching to save people. It's easy to preach to save people. It, it's easy to preach to save you. They get with you as soon as you say Jesus. But go and talk to somebody that don't know. Because, see, they don't know. And so you got to compel them. God has given us that gift to compel men to come to him. God is not looking for a presentation anymore. He's not looking for a presentation because a presentation without the presence of God means you don't have any power. All you got is a presentation. Hallelujah. And if that presentation don't spend his time in the presence of God, then you will have no influence. You will have no anointing. You will have no gifts that God has given you because all you have is a presentation. This week I, I was full. A couple weeks ago I was full because I saw online I wanted a pool for my children. I wanted a large pool. And online they had this grown man sitting in the pool. They had children sitting in the pool. And when we ordered the pool, the pool was no bigger than for a baby. I said, what in the world? I paid all this money for this little old pool and you know you can't find pools because everybody done brought them up. But what the Lord was showing me is, is I didn't look at the depth of the pool. I didn't look at the size. They showed me a picture, but I didn't see behind the picture. And God is looking for people not just to be a picture, but to have some substance behind you, to have some time with me, that when you go out, you will be influenced to other people. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, God is not looking just for a picture. Hallelujah. So Jesus made use of what was available. Jesus went to places and he made use of what was available. How, I want to ask you this question, how can you use your influence? Here's a better question, Does people, do people know on your job that you are saved? Or do you still cuss with them at the cooler? Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. I know I'm stepping on your toe. Do they 
know that you're saved? Because sometimes this creates a window for you to chill with. I, I, I'm going to get what you with you today. I, sometimes it creates a window because if I want to do what I used to do, then I can't just show my sanctification because I might ask them for a blunt. Y'all ain't going to say that to me. I, I might ask them for something. So I can't tell them that I'm all the way in it because if I tell them, that will eradicate me from being able to chill when I'm like I used to. I know y'all get itchy today. But you got to close the door. Somebody say close the door. When you made up your mind to sell out for God, you've got to close the door. Otherwise, you make a place for the enemy to come in and corrupt you once all over there. And then you get involved in something called psychos. Somebody shout psychos. Hallelujah. God told me, he told me, he said, sow into what you have. God told me to sow into every one of you. Those of you that will be committed to come because he says, I have created the atmosphere because the harvest is plenty, but the labors are few. And if you just avail yourself, make yourself available, God will use you. Somebody say, Lord, use me. I know I won't get everybody to say that. But if you really want God to, you just say, God, use me. When you say, God, use me, that means I'm cutting some stuff off. Hallelujah. That means I'm separating myself for the kingdom of God. That means I'm ready to be a liability. Hallelujah. I'm ready to be an asset and not a liability. Jesus went to the place where there was a ready audience. He went to a place for people that were ready to receive him. He told the disciples, dust your feet off if they don't receive you. Wipe your feet off because Jesus was saying that I now have given you the power to step on the head of the scorpions and the serpents and I've given you the ability to set the captives free but what will you do with what God has given you? Ask your neighbor say, what will you do with what God has given you? Hallelujah. I, I feel something in here today. But what the Lord is saying is that I'm ready to use you, but do you see the harvest? Do you see the time? Or are you still on the field? God says, I want to use you, but I'm looking for people that are ready for power. Are you ready for the anointing? Or, or do you want to pass it on? God says, I'm getting ready to do something mighty in your life. If you just get yourself in the right position with me, God says, I'm going to do it for you. I want you to understand this last thing is that God will always provide everything you need if you focus on meeting the need of someone else. Hallelujah. Now see the world has found that out. If you just supply enough people with enough need, then you'll have everything that you want. But in the kingdom of God, he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And he says, what? All of these other things shall be what? Added up to you. So God says, if you just get to the place where you can be usable, then you will see, God can see, he can see his glory working on the inside of you. Somebody say amen. amen. So here we are now in the text. The Bible says in verse 37, he says, then saying unto the disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. What was he saying? He was saying that Jesus, look at Jesus' life. He was healing everybody. He was delivering people. He was, he was healing the blind. He was raising the dead. But he says the laborers are few. In other words, he said it should be somebody else doing what I'm doing, but there's not enough people are ready to go to war for me. And I wonder, do I have any warriors today that are tired of being in the enemy's army? And you made up in your mind that, God, I'm getting ready to do this for you. I've sold out and I've consecrated myself. And, God, if I need to put down my plate, I will. God, if I need to come to prayer meeting, I will. God, if I need to get committed to Bible study, I will. Because, God, I've decided that I'm going to be on your team and not on Satan's team because I'm tired of running in the course that I've been running. Somebody say hallelujah here. Yeah. Jesus went everywhere. Mm. Jesus went everywhere. And he found places where he could be used by the Father. And Jesus taught. And what Jesus was teaching was for you not just to hear it, but for you to live it. And y'all got to understand that Jesus didn't give you information for you just to talk it. But Jesus wants you to live it. To say that you're, he walks with me and talks 
walks with me and tells me that I am his own. God is saying, I'm looking for people that will get committed to not just on Sunday, not just on week, but a daily life and crucify themselves and say, I'm getting ready to do what God has told me. God by my hands and God by my feet. God help me live for you and do it all the way. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, it's time to tell somebody that the same gospel that saved me can save you too. It's time to tell somebody that the same gospel that brought me out can bring you out too. The same gospel that healed me can heal you too. The same gospel that pulled me up can pull you up too. The same God that cured my disease can cure your disease. The same gospel that gives me power can give you power as well. Is there anybody in here that you realize that it's time out for me playing around with God? Oh, y'all ain't saying that to me. It's time out for playing around and get serious with God and say, God, I'll bow myself to you, God. 